to directly shape the decisions that affect them. And I'm going to talk about two mechanisms for direct democracy, as Alan mentioned there, referendums and petitions. So firstly, referendums. Um, referendums are where the public can vote directly on a particular issue or question. So different to elections where they elect a specific representative. Uh, the UK has held relatively few referendums. There have only been 13 of these large scale votes. Some of these have been held in one part of the UK, so like the Scottish independence referendum, and there have only been three UK wide referendums. But actually a lot of other countries like Italy or Switzerland hold multiple referendums a year. Referendums can be held on a range of topics. The first is who the people are. As a lot of some speakers have said in earlier weekends, democracy ultimately is about power of the people. And a referendum is often used to work out who the people are. In the UK, as I mentioned before, we've had the referendum on Scottish independence and independence referendums have been held in other countries. So for example, in Quebec, in Canada and Catalonia in Spain. The second topic on which we usually hold referendums is on changing the constitution. So that's the rules on who has the power to do what. Referendums might be particularly appropriate on issues about where power should lie. So it isn't just the people who already have the power under the current rules who decide that. In the UK, most referendums have been on constitutional issues. So we had referendums before the establishment of the Scottish and Welsh assemblies. And we also held a referendum on the voting system. But not all constitutional issues have been put to a referendum. So we've had major reforms like House of Lords reform that didn't require a vote of the people. Referendums are also very common um, in other countries on constitutional issues, and in some cases, a vote of the public is required to approve any change um, to the constitution. Some other countries, like Ireland and Italy, have also held referendums on moral questions. So things like abortion or divorce and gay marriage um, have often required uh, approval in a referendum. But we don't tend to hold referendums of this type in the UK. Referendums can also be held on regular policy questions. So, for example, um, there's been a referendum in the Netherlands on whether to approve a law that would give um, the intelligence services new powers. And in Italy, there has been a referendum on oil drilling. The UK doesn't tend to hold referendums of this type on these kind of regular policy questions, but it could, in theory, if Parliament decided to do so. So how are, who can call a referendum? In the UK, referendums can only be held if a majority of politicians in Parliament vote to hold one. This means that they usually have the support of the government as well. And this is quite common in other countries. But referendums in other countries sometimes also happen automatically. So if politicians are trying to do something like change the constitution that requires the approval of the people under the rules, then that will automatically trigger a referendum. In some countries, there's the ability for a minority of politicians, so let's say a third or a quarter of those in, in the legislature or the, the parliament, to call a referendum on an issue. And some countries also have provisions for citizens to call referendums. So in places like Italy and Switzerland and New Zealand, citizens can call a referendum if a certain number of people sign a petition calling for one. Sometimes this is on a specific law. In other cases, there can be referendums on anything. Usually if people vote for something in a referendum, politicians are expected to implement that result. That's usually quite straightforward if that's been set out in detail or sometimes in law, but it can get quite messy if the details of what a vote for change actually um, haven't been worked out yet. As Paula mentioned earlier, in some referendums, turnout has been very high and even higher that, than in elections. So for example, there was 85% turnout in the Scottish independence referendum. But in other votes, it's also been quite low. So there was only 34% of people um, turned out to vote in the 1998 referendum on whether to create the position of the London mayor. So it's usually best that referendums are held on issues that people are really interested in. So there's a couple of things we might want to think about, um, about the use of referendums, whether we should hold more or fewer referendums. Should decisions be referred to the people more often? And if we do that, how do we ensure those are issues that people are very interested in so turnout is high? Should we hold referendums on a wider range of issues? As I said, the UK doesn't tend to hold referendums on things like moral questions or regular policy questions, so you might want to think about whether it should. 
who should have the power to call a referendum. As I mentioned, there's provisions for things like citizens initiated referendums in, in other countries. Um, but this could mean holding a lot of votes on an issues that a small number of people feel really strongly about, but most people aren't that interested in. And we might also want to think about how we can ensure that people get the information that they need to make informed decisions. Unlike elections that happen every five years, people might not have thought much about a question they're being asked in a referendum before it's called. It's usually referendum campaigners, those advocating for one side or the other, that are the main source of information. But we can't be sure that they'll always give high quality information because they want to make their case. So we might want to think about what other sources of information we could make available to voters. The second mechanism for direct democracy in the UK is petitions. So a petition is a mechanism that allows a citizen to express a view on an issue. And there are lots of different types of petitions like those set up by charities or websites like change.org that you might be familiar with. But there are only two types of official petitions that allow the public to require certain things to happen. The first one of these is recall. Recall is a mechanism that allows um, voters to trigger an election if their MP has been given a prison sentence or found to have seriously broken parliamentary rules. If that happens, then a petition is opened that voters in that particular constituency can sign. If 10% of people registered to vote in that area sign the petition, then an election is held. If they don't reach that threshold, then the MP remains in post. So far, there have been three recall petitions in the UK since it was introduced. Two of those have been successful. The second type of petition is a petition for Parliament to consider a particular issue. So any British citizen or UK resident can sign a petition about an issue that the UK government or the UK Parliament is responsible for. And Scottish Parliament has its own different system for doing this. If a petition gets 10,000 signatures, then it must get a response from the government in which they might explain their position on that issue, what they're doing in that area and why they do or don't agree with the petition. At 100,000 signatures, the petition is considered for debate in Parliament. And so far, there have been 101 petitions that have been debated in Parliament. This debate is usually just a discussion of the issue. There's no vote and no decision is made, but they can influence decision makers in other ways. A couple of things we might want to think about on the use of petitions um, is whether they should be used to call for other things. I'll just mention two ideas for now. One is referendums. As I, as I said before, petitions can be used to trigger referendums in some countries, or perhaps a petition could be used to trigger something like a citizens assembly. That is all for me from now. Um, thanks very much.